Welcome, welcome. This is a recommendation for this book right here. Uh, Under Custer's Command. This is the Civil War Journal of James Henry Avery. And uh, this is basically a memoir of his exploits with the Michigan Cavalry Brigade during the American Civil War, uh, serving under George Armstrong Custer, the boy general. Um, before I get into talking about this book, I'll read a description of Custer, because everybody knows that Custer is famous for the Battle of Little Bighorn, but this is years before. Custer uh, becomes a general at the age of 23 during this conflict, but Shelby Foote writes a little bit about him in his volume two of the Civil War narrative that he did here on page 910. He says of Custer, Custer had certain peculiarities of aspect. Quote, this officer is one of the funniest looking beings you ever saw, unquote. A colonel of Meade's staff wrote home. Quote, and looks like a circus rider gone mad. He wears a hussar jacket and tight trousers of faded black velvet, trimmed with tarnished gold lace. His head is decked with a little gray felt hat. High boots and gilt spurs complete the costume, which is enhanced by the general's coiffure, consisting in short, dry, flaxen ringlets. Unquote. But these gaudy trappings coupled with a flamboyant personality and reputation as a glory hunter did not interfere with his effectiveness when sheer courage was what was called for, as it was here. So, there's a little bit about his description of what he, his dress consisted of. Uh, this book, you know, the James Avery, he volunteers in 1862 and doesn't really see much action until late 1863 which basically consists of chasing uh mosby the gray ghost cavalry around on a wild goose chase because they never do really find him or anything uh he really doesn't see any serious action until gettysburg just before gettysburg so here's a breakdown of Maps that are in the book, we have the Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania Theater, Hanover, Hunterstown, Gettysburg, Hagerstown, Virginia, Maryland Theater, the Wilderness, and Todd's Tavern, Yellow Tavern, of course Yellow Tavern's where Jeb Stewart, the famed uh, Confederate cavalry soldier died. Then we got the Hawks Shop, Avery's Trillian Trek, Tom's Brook, and Cedar Creek. These are the maps that are located in the book. And there is actual chapter, uh, let's see if I can find the chapter heading, I guess that's it. Um, so here's the chapter's overview, if you want to read that, okay. We have a soldier goes to war chasing Mosby's guerrillas. Now chapter 3 is where the action really starts, which is the Gettysburg campaign. And then uh, we have Bristol Station, Mine Run Campaigns, Winter in Cabinet, Campnet and Reorganization of the Cavalry Corps. And then he campaigns with uh, Philip Sheridan. That's Chapter 6. Chapter 7 is the June 1964 Trevian Raid and an Ordeal to Remember. Chapter 8 is a Temporary and Very Reluctant Infantryman, which is kind of an interesting chapter because for some reason the cavalry... They go to Maryland and they're reassigned as infantrymen. They take their sharps car carbines away from them and their horses and they issue them muskets. And he doesn't know what he's doing with the musket. He ends up fouling, um, James Henry Avery here, ends up fouling his musket. And uh, they get routed by Jubal Early's troops and they take off running for like 12 miles. Um, and he has no arms or anything. They just get completely routed and they freak out. And they all skedaddle out of there. Uh, chapter 9 is Fighting with Little Phil. This is a campaign in the Shenandoah Valley where they defeat um, Jubal Early, basically completely 
obliterate his army. And then uh, the fall and winter of 1864-65, and then he gets ill in Chapter 11, and he basically misses the end of the Civil War, and then Chapter 12 is him returning home. It's a pretty concise and short memoir, but this is from the perspective of a enlisted cavalryman. And I got to say, he's pretty good. I, I really find the cavalry aspect of the Civil War very interesting. And uh, there's some, you know, he doesn't go into a lot of depth on things. So if you're looking at like a an in-depth breakdown of like battles, you're not going to get that in here. It's basically just his recollections and he gives you like a snapshot view, a very quick blurb about it. So I'll read an excerpt here uh, from the book so you can see what I'm talking about. So so for instance here on page uh, 79, this is the Battle of Hawk's Shop, which was fought on May 28, 1864. And what he says here, he basically says, On the morning of the 28th, we moved out towards a place called Hawk's Shop, where we struck the enemy's lines. They were posted in a heavy wood on each side of the road behind the breastworks. We had found their outer lines and charged them mounted and had driven them to the wood when we dismounted and forming in heavy double lines moved forward in columns of battalions. The grounds we had to traverse was open with the exception of some small shrub pines. As we advanced in this field the musket balls began to greet us an increase in volume until a perfect hell of fire and smoke broke from the rebel works. Even the air we breathed seemed thick with lead and sulfur. It did not seem possible for balls to fly thicker. The boughs were dropping constantly from the pines. The leaden messengers splished and splat and chunked as they passed or struck the mark, burying themselves in a human target. Wind fell all sides, some to rise no more some to get up and stagger off to the rear while others started for the rear with arms dangling helplessly and then were overtaken and brought down again perhaps forever i never saw men fall so fast and still the storm increased and the surging lines wavered but bracing up we made a tremendous charge driving the enemy from their works and dealing death and destruction as we jumped over their breastworks and pursued the congrueling rebs the victory is ours but what a cost about 50 men from the regiment lost in a few minutes. Company 1 is fortunate, considering the storm of lead and hail, only losing one man killed and three wounded. Fox had a gun shattered in his hands, but picking up another from the ground he pushed on. You could see heroism all around. Every man made himself a hero in this terrible cyclone. And that's basically his entire recollection of that battle, which is one paragraph. So you're not going to get, like, really in-depth you know, breakdowns of battles or anything like that. This is just him talking about the immediate actions and the things that he that he feels flash bombed into his memory or whatever that he, he wants to talk about. There is another particularly... Oh, here's a picture of uh, James Avery here. This is the guy that wrote the book. So right there he is in his Civil War garb, his, his uniform of the Grand Army of the Republic. And of course, here he is as an older man. And then Philip Sheridan is here. There's a few pictures in here. You know, I, I won't show you all of them, but there's there's Custer. So uh, if you're interested in, interested in cavalry um, tactics and cavalry fighting, uh, this is a very interesting book. These guys carried Sharps carbines which were seven shot rifles and each man carried basically a pair of of revolvers as well and a saber so um or excuse me a revolver i guess the bushwhackers were the ones that carried multiple revolvers although i'm sure that some officers probably carried more than one gun you know as far as sidearms are concerned so there's a lot of uh combats of Custer's cavalry going up against Jeb Stewart. Here, of course, Jeb Stewart's here. We get that. Of course, Jeb Stewart is killed at Yellow Tavern, which is talked about in this memoir as well. So, you know, this is a nice book to uh, fill in some of those, um, what do you want to call them, niche, niche areas of the Civil War. If you wanted to do a cavalry study, 
this is probably a good place to start. Uh, I found this very interesting, and you know, I I really think that the cavalry to me is probably the most interesting aspect of the Civil War. I really like the whole the excuse me the horse soldiers. I think that that's uh, if I was going to enlist, if I was in the Civil War. I definitely would want to be a cavalryman. That's what I would want to do. Um, they do seem to have it better than your standard infantry. I mean, if you read about the exploits and everything in here. There is a truly horrific scene that does take place in Chapter 9 where they capture some of Mosby's uh, raiders. Um says here that uh, Mosby's men, they captured them at Front Royal. Uh, basically, Mosby had murdered a bunch of, or summarily executed a bunch of guys from the Michigan Cavalry for burning houses. Uh, so this is where the war like, gets really bad, where people's property is being destroyed. And so in retaliation, Mosby's raiders, they capture and, and basically murder these dudes and then um, the cavalry here the Michigan cavalry reciprocates they capture a couple of these guys and uh, basically take them out to kill them he says he says here on page 109 this was wrong we all had a spite against them but did not feel like murdering them in cold blood the only proper way would have been to detail a firing party under orders only two men rode out one was a man who had just had a brother killed by them at Berryville the other was the bugler of the regiment who had nothing but his own spleen to vent the boys one about 16 the other about 18 years old were to be shot they begged of the chaplain a chance to run for their lives but no such boon was allowed them they were placed a short distance away and the two men began firing at them. The first shot killed the younger, but the other received two or three balls before he fell. I pronounced this barbarous, and some of the boys muttered at me, but I did not care. Why should we be obliged to see those boys shot down like dogs, right at the doors in this savage style? Two others were led along a piece of wood and hung to a tree. This was a terrible warning to bushwhackers, and this kind of work was carried on until Mosby was glad to quit. So this is like some really horrific stuff. And uh, he talks about it. This is not the glamorous side of warfare. This is the, the sheer animosity and hate and barbary that took place um, in this conflict. So this was a good read. I really found it interesting and I think you will too. So if you're into Civil War history like I am, this was a really interesting memoir of a horse soldier. So check it out. Um, I'll flip it over here so you can get a shot of the ISBN number right there. We always like to do that if possible so you can see it. All right, so there you go. Um, Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.